Hey guys, if you're new here and you like what I'm putting out, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you never miss an upload. So Mighty Morphin issue number 11 was quite the interesting issue because it's setting up for future plot lines and story arcs we'll be getting in the next couple of months, being the Eltarian War. It continues the whole Lord Zed flashback or the Zordon flashback we've been getting since this comic began and it's leading up to bigger and more important moments that is probably setting up the characters motives and learning what they're about. Because in this issue the flashback learns why Zolfram doesn't like Zordon or why Zed doesn't like Zolfram, and you kind of see Zolfram throwing away his old Eltarian identity and becoming Lord Zed as this flashback continues. But not only that, you see Zadi is planting the seeds of their rivalry or their hatred towards one another. So that is some really interesting plot friends that Ryan is putting in this comic. Not only that, he's also setting up other things like Billy doing stuff in the background, Matt doing stuff in the background, and a bunch of other brand new characters introduced that might be a threat moving forward in this comic. So the issue opens up over 10,000 years ago, picking up where we last left off, where Zolfram is a skinless hunk of a human being that is barely clinging on to life, and he's clinging on to life due to Zardius bringing a medicine and stuff, and as the two are talking in this cave, Zardius says to Zolfram says, hey, I think we should tell Zordon that you're still alive, and this is where Zolfram sort of flips out and believes that Zordon was the one who planted the Zeo crystal to be dangerous if anyone touched it. He thinks that Zordon was the one who knew about the Zeo of the dangers of the Zeo crystal, and that's because when they first discovered the Zeo crystal, Zordon knew so much about it. So that's why Zolfram or Lord Zed believes that Zordon was the one who framed him and tried to kill him. So this sort of sets into motion the whole hatred that Lord Zed has for Zordon, and I do like that, I do like that they were getting motivation on why Lord Zed hates Zordon, why he wants him dead, why he wants him gone, why he wanted him captured, all those issues that go in the Dome story arc, so that is very interesting. Not only that, the flashback ends with Zardius having this big smirk on his face as everything is going according to plan for him. And that's the thing we'll learn about Zardius moving forward in this comic is that guy is the true mastermind and the true antagonist of this story arc. He's the one pulling the strings. It's not Lord Zed, it's not the Imperials, it's Zardius taking everyone for a wild ride and trying to get the odds in his favor as he plays God. And we're going to talk more about Zardius as this comic goes on because this guy is... Freaking sus, I will say that. So, after the flashback, we then cut to the present day, where the Stone Canyon Trio and Billy are having lunch in the cafeteria. And I really like this parallel that Ryan is doing, because in the flashback, you've got the hatred for Zolfram hating Zordon, and him wanting him dead. And then you cut to the present, where the Rangers even though they've had their ups and downs in this comic, they're still good friends, they're still on good terms, they're not mad at each other, and they forgive Billy about what happened, and they kind of understand why he did the things that he did, so that's really nice. And as the Rangers are having this conversation, Rocky kind of slips in that Zordon wants to take away his coin, so Billy learns that from Rocky, which is kind of a funny moment the way Rocky does it, because he kind of does the coughing, like, cough, Zordon wants to take away your coin, that's how... I think he does it. I think that's how it's meant to do, how it's meant to be done with how Ed sort of letters the um, uh, text going on. So that was a fun little moment that Rocky had in this comic. So after that, you then cut to the juice bar where we have this conversation between Matt and Kimberly, and I can understand both sides of the argument with what they're trying to say here, but it basically boils down to, hey, who can you trust? Matt doesn't trust Zordon, Kimberly doesn't trust Grace, Kimberly says that Grace is using Matt, Matt says, what if Zordon's doing the same thing, and Kimberly says, you don't know Zordon like we know him, and Matt replies with, maybe but I know that this isn't this isn't his home, and if the day finally comes where he has to decide between his own people and, huma and humanity, who is he going to choose? So that's an interesting choice of words that Matt says, and I do wonder if that's going to play into the like into the story arc moving forward. Is Zordon going to choose the people of Eltar, 
or is he going to choose Earth, the planet that he's been on for thousands of years or even more? So that's going to be an interesting choice that Zordon has to make. So I'm going to keep those words in check and see if we revisit him. But yeah, Matt did come off as a total dickhead in this conversation, not wanting to apologize to Tommy with everything that happened. But it is what it is. Alright, now we get to one of my favorite parts of this issue, and that is the introduction to the Sentry Force 4, the characters known as Zenith, Zero Zero, Zeta, and Zag. And what these guys are, these guys are Guardians, like Zordon and Zardius was back in the day, but these guys are more meant for aggressive encounters, so getting blood on their hands and stuff like that, doing the dirty work, getting some fists and some punches involved and stuff like that. So the Sentry Force 4 all have their own unique quirks and abilities. Zag having the ability to have Rick and Morty powers where they just teleport from place to place. Zenith having the powers of a wasp where they just fly around. Zero Zero, they're just a really small person in a giant Hulkbuster outfit. And Zeta, well, Zeta likes swords. That's their gimmick. So while the Rangers and the Sentry Force 4 are training, you've got Zardius and Tommy having a discussion about Matt, where Zardius says, hey, I heard there's this rogue Green Ranger operating on the planet. And Tommy's like, well, he's not more of a rogue, but he's helped us out a few times. And Zardius is like, can you trust him? And Tommy's like, maybe. And Zardius goes, well, when the Imperials come down and we face them, you're going to need all the ranges you can get when you take on these guys. So that's Zardius' pep talk to Tommy in this issue, which whenever Zardius, whenever I see him on screen, I fucking hate this guy because you know this guy is two-faced. You know this guy's got his own plan. So you're trying to figure out, is there something deep in his dialogue? You're trying to decipher it and understand what he's saying. But I mean... Like, fuck Zardius when he tries being nice. I don't trust the dude. Alright, so after that, we then have the Sentry 4 and Zardius back on their ship. And surprise, surprise, Zayla or Candace is back on their ship as well. And that shows that Lord Zed was true to his word and said that he would let her go once he was done telling his story. So that shows that she's alive and well, which is good to know. But she tells a sort of a fib to Zardius and the Sentry Force saying, hey, once Lord Zed's minions dropped their guard, I took them all out and I escaped. And as she walks away, no one's buying it. And we'll get to the Eltarian people on the Sentry ship in a bit because there's more of that we need to discuss later. So after that, we then cut back down to Earth and Billy is at Promethea, I think, and he's working on something with Grace. And what he's working on... We don't really know, the audience doesn't know, so it's teasing that Billy is making something big, but Billy talks about the whole Guardian of Eltar thing, and Grace is aware that, hey, first we've had Al Altarians infiltrating our planet, now we've got a giant intergalactic warship hovering over our planet, something bad is gonna go down. But she also says to Billy, saying, hey, if things don't work out being a ranger, you'll always have a place here and you're welcome to come join my side. So Grace says even though she's problematic and she can be a bit of a use lunatic, she's still offering a place for Billy to work if things don't work out with Zordon. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Grace is not the nicest person here and there, but it's nice to show that she's looking out for Billy and Karen for the dude. I like that a lot. So after that, we then cut back to Zardius in his ship looking over the Earth. And Zardius' spaceship is very interesting because he's got a desk beside him with some interesting objects on there. I believe you see the skull of one of the Hatarians that was burnt to death. One of them looks like, kind of looks like a helmet for a ranger. Uh, one of them looks like a weird hourglass. Another one looks like a weird trophy. He's got a lot of interesting objects on his desk and I'm hoping that Ryan sort of reveals what they are in an interview or on a podcast because those items... They've got me all, they've got my attention. Whatever they are, they look like trophies from planet that Zardus has conquered with the Imperials. So Zardus is talking, or Zardus, Zardus is talking to one of his uh, lackeys, and 
Zardius wants all the Eltarians to rally to Earth because there might be an invasion. Who knows? It looks like they're going to war for something. But he kind of friends the uh, lackey and says, leave now. And as he's looking at Earth, he sighs and says, how can a small world create so many? And before he finishes his sentence, you see him walking to the vault and you see that strange crystal from a couple of issues ago that he had in his hand in Power Rangers 8. Now, I don't know what this is. I've heard it's the Dino Egg. I've heard it's the Zeo Crystal. But it gets name dropped as the Celestial Shard. So that's an interesting name of that they're calling it. The Celestial Shard. So whatever it is, it sounds important. So Zarnia's friends to blow up the Earth. And this sends Candace or Zelia, whatever you want to call her, into a frenzy. But she's quickly defeated by the Sentry Force 4. And we don't know what happens to her. She's supposedly killed. She's supposedly locked away in a dungeon. I don't know. But we don't know her fate by the end of this issue. So is she dead? Is she alive? I'm not entirely sure. Alright, so these final two pages are kind of mind-boggling. So bear with me. So Zardius does his hologram and talks to Zordon and tells a lie, I want to call it a lie, I'm calling Zardius out on his bullshit, saying that Zayla escaped Lord Zed but was sending her back to Eltar because she needs to recover. But he also has a request from Zordon saying, hey, we need the power coins. My Sentry Force 4 they'd be better off using the power coins than some teenagers with attitude. And Zordon is kind of hesitant, saying, I'm not sure, but my my allegiance lies with Eltar, so whatever you require. And Zardius is like, thank you, Zordon, dear friend. I'll message you when the time comes. So then on the final page, you have Zordon talking to the rangers, and someone asks, saying, Zordon, does that mean? And Zordon replies with, Zayla failed. Rangers, with her advance warning, we don't have much time. The Eltarian invasion is upon us. And that's where the issue ends. So, yeah, it's kind of a weird twist that I'm trying to wrap my head around. So, there was some kind of advance warning that Zayla sent to Zordon. I'm not sure what we know about it, but I get the feeling she knew that something was up. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe Zordon caught on to Zardius' bullshit and knows about the uh, Imperial invasion. But this final page was kind of a head-scratcher. And left me a little bit confused. But either way, I'm excited for future things to happen later down the line. Because we're getting closer and closer to the, in, not the Imperial War, the Eltarian War. The Eltarian Invasion, as Zordon calls it. So, I'm really excited. This was a really good issue. Um, it's setting up for future story arcs later down the line. A lot of character development, a lot of stuff in flashback land, and I'm excited to see where it goes next. Anyway guys, that's my review, recap, discussion, mini podcast of Mighty Morphin issue number 11. I enjoyed it quite a fair bit and like I said, it's setting up for big things moving forward in the future. But what did you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, love to hear your opinions. Do you have any theories, speculations and stuff like that? I'd love to hear them. But I'm going to bring this video to a close. Special thanks to all the members such as Swaggerfor and Andrew McCoyle. If you want to get your name shouted out like these guys over here, join the Patreon or become a YouTube member so you can have your name in the credits of every video or shout it out. Your support is greatly appreciated and it helps keep the lights on here. With that said, I'm wrapping this video up now. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day or night and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Take care. Bye.